And Rob is uh, Rob Gregor is from the Herbert Hotel. He is the uh, proprietor of the Herbert Hotel, as well as some other hotels in uh, in New York, right? Lake George area. Yes. Yeah. How many you got over there? I've got three in Lake George, and then the one up here in uh, Good Old Kingfield. Yeah, Good Old Kingfield. Well, welcome to you, Rob. Thanks, Thanks for, for being here. I, I kind of fibbed to you. I said, "Oh, driving will be no problem this morning." It was a little bit challenging, but uh, we're was. glad you're here. I made it one piece, you know. The the GMC uh, four wheel drive made it great. Oh, you so. gotta have it. Now the Herbert Hotel, uh, there's a lot of things. Uh, it, it is it's an icon uh, here in Kingfield, and it has a rich history. And uh, you provided us with some information. There's some pretty interesting stories about the Herbert Hotel. First off, how many rooms do you have? You have 26 guest rooms total. Yeah, and. Uh, now you have a, uh, a bar in there as well, right? We do. Uh, McGregor's Pub, we built it out last December. Well, opened it last December. Um, we just keep it open Fridays and Saturday nights, serve uh, main maid and local drafts, uh, local wines, try to source locally as much as possible with the food, um, who we buy from up the supply chain and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Really trying to you know, focus on uh, assisting other independent businesses such as ours. So you're doing food there too? We do food there as well, yeah. yeah. We have a nice little pub menu there. Um, everything from you know, chicken wings to some homemade soups. Mm -hmm. um, the nachos are my personal favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my son's too. Oh, yeah. great. And you got a big family. They're all up here. Yes, yes. Now, we, we, the history of the hotel is pretty interesting. Now, uh, it goes way back to... There was a, a speakeasy there at one time. So yeah, the, 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 there's folklore plenty about folklore, Kingfield, yeah. and then you know other documentation that we found through the years in newspaper articles. So as best we can tell, um, the property gets well. We know the property gets constructed um, in 1918. Um, yeah. So we're 100 years old this year. Uh -huh. um, the gentleman who builds it is doing it more as a political stunt. Um, he wants to be governor of Maine. No one really taking him that seriously because he's up from the Kingfield area and he owns the local bank, he owns the electricity, electric company in town, basically owns everything. Right. Puts this place up, has it kind of fashioned, especially the facade, the exterior, to look like the state house in Augusta. Um, and apparently just uses it less as a financial money generator, more as a place to entertain. <laughs> so think, you know, you know politicians, cigars, uh, brandy. Yeah, the downstairs bar area does, well, what used to be the bar down, downstairs has the remnants of what was once either speakeasy or some sort of um, way of escaping rather quickly <laughs> just in case um, uh, the local authorities or powers that be uh, came a-knocking. Wow. So um, it's, it's an amazing place. But yeah. the pub that we run now is on upstairs. the upstairs, and yeah. it's legal, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's legal, too. I'm sure of that. Uh, and, and it's very beautiful, marble, and uh, very ornate. And you still have some representation of yesteryear with the phones and things sure. of that sort. So when we, were, we completely renovated all 26 guest rooms in 2016, and we made painful efforts to try to preserve as much as possible. Right. Um, so most of the guest rooms have, believe it or not, the original antique furnishings in them from 1918 when we opened, which, you know, as a hotel owner, it's amazing that any furniture size more than five years, never mind a hundred years. Quality. Goes to, sh well, goes to show you what American manufacturing was you know, in the turn of the century. It really did last for a long time. We still have a lot of the antique phones. Some of the guest rooms still have the antique phones in them. Um, we have the phone booths. Mm. And we constantly find things still at the hotel, even after owning it for 10 years, that are buried away or tucked away. Um, even just this past year, we found you know, some signage that's probably go, dates back into the 40s or 50s. Exciting. Um, that was just hidden away that no one ever noticed. Yeah, before. that furniture may have been hand wood turned by someone locally even. You never some know. of it was, yeah. some, sometimes we, we've actually researched the nameplates and some of the companies and some of it was locally done. Uh, Herbert Wing, who was the person who built the property, whose yep. you know, namesake we have, um, he actually owned also one of the wood turning mills. So yeah. he would have you know, used sense. his own wood. <laughs> To build now, this property. Let's talk about one of the other characters, uh, Bud Dick. Bud, um, yeah. yeah. Bud was three predecessors ago, um, and he is, I think he's, he's received legendary status in Kingfield and amongst the Herbert. Um, he took over the place in the 80s out of bankruptcy. He inherited a place effectively that had busted pipes all over the place um, that was not operational. And he really took the Herbert into its next kind of generation of success. Mm -hmm. um, Bud was famous for just, I mean, basically making every guest, everybody knew Bud when they came in there. Right. And every guest felt very welcomed. Um, 
He left in 98, I believe he took it ill in 98, and then the place went through some more problems and some more strange history. Yeah. Um, we get in 09, and I get to meet Bud, and he came up a number of different times. Last I heard, he's actually still kicking out there in New Hampshire somewhere. Yeah, he was quite a character. He was president of the Restaurant Association. I remember meeting him and uh, a balloon from his, from his hat coming into the banquet room. Uh, he, he certainly understood what fun was.